Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your Dive Math 7.6 CDs. First, work the problems with me. Work every practice problem that I work and write down everything that I write down. Remember too that my practice problems, they aren't the same as the practice problems in that particular lesson that you're doing. They're similar, but they're not the same. So if you need some extra practice, do the ones in the book as well. Next, pause and rewind until you understand. This is one of the things that makes doing a lesson on a CD so much better than a live classroom is that you can rewind the teacher. You can just rewind and rewind until you understand a particular concept. So make sure and take advantage of that. Also, remember when you're working the practice problems, do a couple of them with me. Then if you think you understand how to do the next one, pause the CD, work it yourself, fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, go on to the next one. If you got it incorrect, rewind and see what you did wrong. You also need to make sure and do the facts practice, mental math, and problem solving section that's at the top of each lesson. Do one of those at least once per week. And those facts practice tests, you need to make at least a 90% or greater on those. Otherwise, you need to do them again. You should also time yourself on those facts practice tests and try to beat your previous time. Also remember to do all the problems in every problem set and also do all the tests that are in the test booklet and there are instructions in the test booklet as to when to take those tests. It's important to show your work as well. In Math 7-6 there's lots of mental math, meaning math that you do in your head, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division. So do most of it in your head, but when you need to show your work, don't hesitate to show your work. Especially if you're getting a particular problem wrong repeatedly, that probably means you're not showing enough work. And finally, have a good attitude. The best math program in the world won't make a bit of difference if you don't have a good, hard-working attitude. Be thankful that you have a nice computer with speakers and a cool CD lesson to work on and to learn from. Not everybody has that advantage that you have. God has given you a great opportunity here to have an excellent education and part of it is up to you as to your attitude and what you make of this opportunity. So work hard, do your best to learn these lessons and I know that God will bless you for that. Lesson 1 has three parts. The first part is on adding whole numbers and money. Then we'll discuss subtracting whole numbers and money. And finally, we'll discuss fact families. First, let's talk about adding whole numbers and money. When we combine two or more numbers, we say that we add those numbers together. Let's just think of a really simple example. 2 plus 2 equals 4. We combine those two numbers together, 2 plus 2, and those equal 4. We say that we've added now we have some special names for these numbers. The numbers that we combine or add together, we call those the add-ins. And then the result of adding those together, we call that the sum. Now when we add larger numbers together, say like a 21 plus a 47, remember that you add the digits that have the same place value. So the 1 and the 7, those are in the 1's place, so we would add those together. 1 plus 7 is 8. And then the 2 and the 4, those are in the 10's place, and so we would add the 2 and the 4 together. There would be no reason to add the 2 and the 7 or the 1 and the 4. They're not in the same place. So the 2 and the 4, we add those together, and that would be 6. And so our answer there would be 68. Let's try another addition problem. Let's do this one that I have on the board. Remember, all the problems that I do, you should do those as well on your paper. So let's do this one. We have the digits lined up, 3225 plus 475 plus 1293. Now, just something to keep in mind there. It doesn't matter what order we put those numbers in. We could have put the 475 first, and then the 3225, then the 1293. The order of them doesn't matter. The important thing is that we have the digits lined up, and we add the digits with the same place value together. So let's start on the right. 5 plus 5 plus 3. 5 plus 5 is 10, and then plus 3, that would be 13. And so we bring a 3 down and carry a 1 to the tens column. And so we can do 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 7 is 10, 10 plus 9 is 19. So we bring a 9 down there, carry another 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 
3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9, and then the final column we have a 3. We don't have anything in the second row there. We just don't worry about that. We just say 3 plus 1 is 4. And so 4993, 4993 is our answer. Let's try an addition problem with money this time. Let's have seven dollars and three cents plus one dollar and twenty-five cents plus nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Now, a money problem, we do that the same way as the addition problem we just did. We line up the digits with the same place value. And one other thing to think about on money is to line up the decimal points. And that, that assures you that you've got it lined up correctly. And so let's go ahead and just rewrite the 7.03. I always do my addition vertically. I think that's the best way to do it. 1.25 and 9.75. Okay, so let's just add just like we did in the previous problem. 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 5 is 13. Carry a 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 2 is 3, and then plus a 7 is 10. So we have a 0 there, carry a 1. 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9, plus another 9 is 18. And so our answer is 1803. And we can put a dollar sign back in front of that. Eighteen dollars and three cents. Now let's talk about subtracting whole numbers in money. Now if you remember when you subtract two numbers you find the difference between those numbers. Remember the result of addition is called the sum of the numbers. The result of subtraction is called the difference. And if you had like four minus three the difference in those two numbers is one. Now when we set up a subtraction problem that's very similar to addition, we line the digits with the same place value up and then we subtract. Let's try subtracting this number, this pair of numbers, 6,551 minus 238. Let's just rewrite that. Line the digits with the same place value up. And let's go ahead and subtract. Put a subtraction symbol there and we remember that we need to regroup when we need to on these problems so if we do 1 from 8 that's not going to work so we need to carry a 1 over from that 5 change the 5 to a 4 and carry a 1 over now we have 11 so we can subtract 8 from 11 that will work 11 minus 8 is 3 and then we can do 4 minus 3 is 1 5 minus 2 is 3 and then we just have a 6 there by itself so we just leave it like that. We can put a comma there for the 6,313. That's our answer. So let's just review something here. Remember you can't subtract a bigger number from a smaller number. For example when we first started here in our ones place value we had an 8 from a 1. You can't do that you have to have a smaller number from a bigger number. And so we had to regroup there. We had to carry a 1 over from the 5 and make that an 11. And so then we have 11 minus 8. Or we subtracted, you can also say we subtracted 8 from 11. And the difference there is 3. Let's try another subtraction problem. This time let's do one dealing with money. This time let's subtract $2.45 from $8. Now, just think about this, $8, we can write that, 8, and then point zero zero. Since it's money, you can always write money with two decimal places. And that allows us to line up our numbers. Remember, we line them up at the decimal place. And so we have 245. We're subtracting 245 from $8. So we look at our ones column there, our first column. That's to the right of the decimal place, so that actually be the hundredths column. And we see that we can't subtract 5 from 0, so we have to carry a 1 over, and we have to carry that from 
the 8, and so we make that a 7, and we put a 1 here, so we have a 10 there, and then we have to carry a 1 from that, so we cancel that, make that a 9, and carry a 1, and now we have a 10. So 10 minus 5 is 5. Then we could do 9 minus 4 is 5. We have a decimal place here. 7 minus 2 is 5. We can put our dollar sign. $5.55 would be our answer. Well, the last part of this lesson is on fact family, so let's talk about those now. Now in this book, we'll talk about fact families, and basically all those are is a group of three numbers that can be arranged, and in this case, we'll arrange them to form two addition facts and two subtraction facts. For example, let's try three numbers, 3, 2, and 5. And we only use these three numbers, and we try to make two addition facts and two subtraction facts. So first, let's make two addition facts. We could say 3 plus 2 equals 5. And remember, when we add two numbers together, the order that we add them in does not matter. So that can be our second addition fact. 2 plus 3 is 5. So we've made two addition facts. Now let's do two subtraction facts. We always subtract a smaller number from a larger number. 5 is our largest number, so let's put that here, and let's do 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 would be 3. We've used our three numbers. And then let's do 5 minus 3 this time. That would equal 2. So we've made two addition facts and two subtraction facts. To understand these fact families a little bit better, let's Think about an addition fact that would not work using these three numbers. You couldn't say 5 plus 3 is 8, because the 8, that's not one of the three numbers that you're using in the fact family. So that order, or that combination, would not work. Likewise, a subtraction fact that wouldn't work, you couldn't do 3 minus 2 because that equals 1, and 1 is not in the fact family. So that one wouldn't work either. Let's do one more example. Remember, all the problems that I do on the board, you should do those with me. So let's try this one. Let's say we had this addition fact, 15 plus 5. Think about what that equals. That would be 20, right? 15 plus 5 is 20. So let's use those three numbers, the 15, the 5, and the 20, as a fact family. Let's make one more addition fact and two subtraction facts. Let's work on our addition facts first. We had 15 plus 5 is 20. That's the one that we were given. So we could do 5 plus 15. That equals 20 as well. So there's another addition fact. And then let's do two subtraction facts. 20, that's our biggest number. That's usually the one you always put on top when you're doing your subtraction facts on these problems. So put the 20 here, and then we could do minus 5. That equals 15. And then we could do 20 minus 15. That equals 5. So there's our three answers to that problem. Now remember, I don't do the practice problems like they have on page 4. I don't do those problems. I do problems that are very similar to those. So if you need a little extra practice, like on that last problem that we did, you might want to do practice problem F. Okay, well that's all for lesson 1.